don't even know what time it is. What time is it? Oh, we got four minutes. Cool. We're going to hang out for four minutes then. Are you going to interrupt class? Yes, you are. Way. Way. Hi. <laughs> We're going to start in just a second. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to actually get to 6 o'clock. I just logged in a little early because it's me and things go wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Hi. Just a few more minutes. So if you need to grab your mat, your water, um, if you're using blocks or any other props, you can have them nearby. Um, we're just going to give it three more minutes um, for people to log on to join 6 p.m. as well as hopefully get the bulldog to lie down. <laughs> so he might be joining class too. You guys can handle it. It's good. Um, can you guys hear me? I've got my mic in and I'm not sure it's actually working. All right, I'll take that as a yes. Three minutes. This is not a good place to lie down. No. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Hi. <laughs> All right. So, yep. Mats, water. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. more minutes. Seems like in a turn. One more minute. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I don't need your help right now. confusing because my phone is sideways. Thank you. Okay, let's start getting to it. So we're going to do a quick 30-minute flow. There'll be a little bit of a Shavasana. If you have time to hang out in Shavasana longer, by all means, go for it. Um, we are not going to go crazy. That does not mean we might not feel challenges as we're moving through this class. I do want you to feel challenges. Um, so know that it's not necessarily meant to be an easy class. It's just this isn't going to be a lot of vinyasas. This is going to be um, me getting back in my bones and you enjoying class with me. And maybe you're getting back in your bones again. Or um, you just kind of feel like doing a light flow at home. I don't know. I don't need to know. So um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get to the mat. And I am going to ask everyone to start in child's pose. And so that's big toes together. Knees are going to be apart. Um, start with the knees as wide as the mat. But you can certainly bring the knees closer together if you like. And arms can be forward at the sides. Push the bulldog out of the way. 
<laughs> so I'm going to keep my head up a little bit because I do have a microphone. But just let your forehead rest on the mat and just take a few breaths here. Now, if this is just way too much for your knees, you're welcome to go onto your back, lying on your back and hugging your knees to your chest like so. You don't have to put all that weight and that pressure. I just want you to quiet the breathing, slow everything down. You have to go out of the way. Thank you, sir. Good. Let's go ahead and take one more big inhale and exhale. And then if your arms are not forward, go ahead and bring them forward and lift your head. And you're going to come up onto your fingertips. And I want you to walk your fingertips off the left side of the mat. And then if you want a little extra stretch, you can walk your right fingertips slightly forward of your left. And you're going to get a big right side body stretch here. Now you're welcome to let the head drop all the way down. You're welcome to look at your fingertips, whatever is most comfortable for your neck. Good. And then you're going to go ahead and walk your hands back through center. Stay on those fingertips. Walk your hands over to the right hand side. And then start to walk those fingertips slightly forward. The left fingertips slightly forward to the right. And again, those options wherever is most suitable for your neck here. Good. And then start to bring it back to center once more. And you're going to go ahead and let the top of your head come to the mat. And you're going to grab your heels and just start to lift your hips. Now, just come to the top of the head. Don't go too crazy. Don't get too aggressive. Bring your hips back down. And then you're going to start to come up to hands and knees. So first we're going to check in for shoulders over elbows over wrists. And we're going to have the knees directly beneath the hips. We're just going to do a few rounds of cat-cow here. So to do that, we're going to inhale, drop the belly, lift this tailbone, lift the chin, shoulders away from the ears. Really think about making yourself long in the front body. Good. And then as you exhale, tuck the tailbone, push the mat away, tuck the chin towards the chest. Good. And then let's go ahead. Inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, lift the chin. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, push the mat away. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do two more here. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Good. And then come back to neutral here. And you're going to go ahead and straighten your left leg. And I want your toes to stay on the mat. And just push into that heel to start to feel a nice calf stretch here. Good. Keep the scapula flat on the back. Try not to let them wing out. And then we're going to go ahead and turn to the inside of the left foot. And we're going to start to come to resting on our right, hand, right knee and right hand. Reach the left arm forward. And then start to lift the left leg. Not required, but give it a try if you're thinking about it. And really push the left heel away while reaching the left fingers away, getting as long as you can. And then we're going to bend the left knee and the left elbow. Start to bring them together. Just pause for a moment. The bulldog licking is actually my support system. I do it better. You need one too. Go ahead and push the leg and the arm away again. You're going to drop that left foot and then really just create a big arch through the left side of the body. Big left side body stretch. Good. And then start to turn towards your mat. Bring the left hand down. Bring the left knee down. We're going to come to the other side. So go ahead and straighten that right leg. Push the right heel back. Get that nice little calf stretch here. Good, and then start to turn to the inside of the right foot. Come to standing on the left hand, left knee. Reach the right arm forward, and then option to let that right leg lift. And if the balance feels a little bit off, you feel a little shaky, that's okay. That's your muscles learning this new move, this new balance here. Start to bend the right knee, right elbow. Bring them together. And if you do fall out, just take a deep breath and slowly come back in. And then go ahead and start to reach once more. 
we're going to let that right foot come down and we're going to get that really big side body stretch on the right hand side. Pet the bulldog. And then go ahead and start to turn towards the mat. Bring both hands down, both knees down. I'm going to walk my hands slightly forward to my shoulders, curl the toes under, press the hips up and back into down dog. And so just take a second if you want to twist side to side here, if you want to bend the right knee and the left knee, whatever floats your boat. Shake the head yes and no. And then start to walk your hands back towards your feet. And find yourself in a forward folding bend at the back of the mat. And just hang here for a second. Knees do not have to be locked out straight. You can have a slight bend in them. But I want you to think about bringing the hips above the ankles and letting the head drop towards the ground. Good. So now my feet are about hips width apart. If yours aren't, go ahead and separate them. It's about two fists. And you're going to bend your knees and drop your torso completely onto your thighs. You're going to let your head drop and wrap your arms around behind you to grab opposite elbows. And that might be more up here. It might be more down here. It's going to look different for all of us. But start to lift your hips and let the crown of the head move towards that space between your feet. So resist that urge to throw your chin out. I want it to be from the top of your head. Legs might not go straight. Legs might shake. It's all good. Just go with it. Just see where your body is and observe it without judgment. Good. And then go ahead and bend the knees once more. Let the arms hang. We're going to walk the hands out, start to find our way back to down dog. Go ahead and take a quick little walk here. Remember to keep those shoulders away from the ears. Good. And then I'm going to walk my feet all the way towards my hands this time. So I'm at a forward folding bend at the top of the mat. Bring your fingertips down, slight bend in the knees or more of a bend in the knees, whatever you need. And bring the feet about hips width apart so the outer edges of the feet line up with the outer edges of the mat. And I want you to start to bend your knees, sink your tuchus back, and reach the arms forward, sinking into a squat. So as I said, this might be a challenge. I'm looking for challenge. You can get through this. Take a big breath in. Exhale, just drop into it. And you don't have to walk around and turn with me. I'm just talking to you. So <laughs> you can stay where you are if you like. Go ahead and bend the knees once more. Reach the arms forward, really sinking into it. Shoulders away from the ears. Now, if you try to bring your biceps back by your ears and you have to shrug them, just start to bring the hands a little bit wider. Just means the shoulders might be a little bit tight. Big breath in. Exhale. Whomp. Just fold over into it. I'm going to get back here. Here we go again. Bend the knees. Drop in the hips. Reach the arms up. Excellent. Go ahead and bring your hands to your hips. Put all of your weight in your right leg. I want you to step the left leg back to start to find a lunge. So we're on the ball of the left foot. Right knee is bent, probably talking to you. We're going to lift our torso back up and reach our arms up and overhead. Excellent. Shoulders relax. Drop your right arm towards your right side. I'm going to turn so you can see. And you're going to reach your left arm over. So we're going to get that big side body stretch through the left hand side. Perfect. Arms come up and overhead again. That back left foot that we're on the ball of it, I want you to turn that foot flat. Have the toes pointed towards the front of the mat, sinking into it, finding warrior one. Good. Bring your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, roll the shoulders back, big breath in, option to look up, and then exhale, I want you to fold over the right leg, don't rest your weight on it, and start to push your knuckles away from you, rolling the shoulders back. Yes, my right thigh is having quite the conversation with me as well. <laughs> it's okay, we're all in it together. Start to pull yourself up with your knuckles, arms up and overhead. Keep that knee bent. I know you want to straighten it. You're going to reach your right arm forward, left arm back. And this time I'm going to walk my right foot to line up so the right heel lines up with the left arch, warrior two. Really reach through the arms, sink into this lunge. Keep the breath steady. I know you can hear mine. Good. Left hand to the left thigh, right palm flips up and over. Over and back, big extended 
I'm sorry, reverse warrior, but a big extension through the right side of the body. Try not to rest your weight on your left arm. A great way to test that, bring the arm up. Good, come up, warrior two. And then we're going to start to look towards the front of the mat. I'm gonna heel toe that right foot over very slowly. It's gonna look different. One, two, three, or 10 steps. I'm gonna start to look towards the front of the mat, bring that left foot forward to find myself back in my chair pose. I'm gonna move so you guys can see. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna step the right foot back coming into the lunge on the opposite side. So again, you can always bring those hands to the hips as you move if that feels steadier. Arms up and overhead. Good, this time left arm drops, right arm reaches to the left side, getting that big side body stretch. Very good. Both arms come up and overhead. Turn that back foot flat. Warrior one. We're rotating our hips and our shoulders towards that short edge at the front of the mat. And then go ahead and bring your arms down behind you. Interlace the fingers, opposite thumb on top if you're not sure which thumb was on top the last time. Whichever way feels like the odd way this time is very likely the right side. <laughs> so go ahead and drive those knuckles down, roll the shoulders back, look up, big breath. Exhale, we're gonna drop down towards that left leg, keep driving the knuckles away. Good. Let the head drop. Let the neck muscles relax. Start to pull yourself up, up, up. Keep pressing into that left leg. Left arm reaches forward. Right arm reaches back. I'm going to heel toe that left foot. So the left arch, left heel lines up with my right arch. Sink. So you can look this way. If it's appropriate for your neck, look towards the fingers of the left hand. Good. I know the left thigh is talking. Right hand to right leg, left arm reaches up and back. Big stretch. Good. We're doing pretty good here. Keep sinking into it. All right, we're going to bring those hands back up to warrior two. Remember, you can bring your hands to your hips. However you want to get there, you're going to turn towards your front left leg, and you can start to creep that right foot forward to meet the left, finding yourself in your chair pose again. I'm going to stay on this side. Big breath in, keep sinking into it. And then as you exhale, I want you to step your right leg back again, and we're gonna turn so that we're looking forward, long edge of the mat, feet are parallel. Good. Go ahead and bend the knees. I'm sorry, turn the heels and toes out. Bend the knees and bring your hands to your thighs. So after all that, this might feel quite nice and lovely. Don't get used to it. <laughs> All right, you're going to start to press into your right thigh with your right hand. You're going to drop the right shoulder in, and you're going to look towards your left. And again, your range of motion, you might be able to look back very far over your left shoulder. You might not be turning your head very far. It's just where you're feeling today, where your body is. But press into that right thigh to get a little extra stretch. Then come back to center left side. Drop that left shoulder in, turn that gaze, keep pressing into the thigh. Good. So what started off nice starts to get a bit old, doesn't it? Okay. Come back to center and we're going to look towards the front of the mat, which is the left leg this time, and you're going to options. Stay nice and low if you want more burn and bring the right foot to meet the left. If you're like, I'm sick of you and your burn lady, go ahead and just straighten the legs. Come back up to the front. I'm going to turn because I got to go to the other side. But then we're all going to meet back here in this chair pose. You can keep the hands on the hips. This time we're going to step the left leg back. Step around the bulldog if you have one on your mat. Good. And let's go ahead and straighten the legs. So now I've got my heels and toes out again. We're going to come into Garudasana arms. So bring your arms nice and wide. And then you're going to put the right elbow underneath the left. And then you're going to continue the wrap. So your wrap might look like this. Your wrap might look something more like this. It could be something like this. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. So don't worry so much about what my wrap looks like. Just listen to what I'm saying and feel it in your body. 
So we had straight legs. <laughs> I'm on a squat mission today. We're going to push the elbows forward and up, shoulders down, bend the knees, sink. Good. Keep rolling the knees back. This is going to get really interesting further down the road. Eyes can be open or closed. If you find your strength internally, close your eyes. If you need to focus on something, go ahead and open your eyes. And then go ahead and straighten the legs once more. Reach the arms out nice and wide. Ha! Open up the chest. We got to do the opposite side. So this time we're going to put the left elbow underneath the right and we're going to continue our wrap. Now you might notice that one side wraps very differently than the other. Completely normal. Please don't face it with judgment. Just an acknowledgement of where you are. Push the elbows forward and up, shoulders down, bend the knees. Yay, squats. <laughs> Good. Keep thinking about those knees rolling back. Um, I have tight hips, and so my knees want to roll in, and I really have to actively think about engaging my gluteus medius. That's for you, Mr. Kevin Barney, if you're here. <laughs> That's for you, Monique, if you're here. Um, just two talented physical therapists that I worked with. Um, they worked on me, and I learned a lot from. And so activating those glute meds is key key to hip stability and healthier knees. You're like, I don't care. This burns. Let's get out of it. Go ahead and straighten the legs. Reach the arms out. Oh, perfect. Looking towards the front of your mat. This time the right leg is going to be the front of your mat. And you can stay in the squat and step forward if you want to do that. If you're like, eh, no, just walk your way back. Good. You stay where you are. I'm sorry. You got to move. Okay. So coming back into our chair pose once more, I want you to sink as low as you can without bringing your butt all the way down to the mat. Take a big breath in, and then exhale, just drop the arms, keep the knees bent, sweep the arms up, big breath. Keep going, exhale, drop, inhale up. One more time, exhale, drop, inhale up. And then you get to straighten the legs. Ah, oh, perfect. Go ahead and exhale. Pull the elbows back. Puff out the chest. Inhale. Reach the arms up and overhead. You're going to drop your left arm to your left side. Reach the right arm over. Big side body stretch. Inhale up to center. Exhale. Pull the elbows back. Inhale. Reach. Exhale, right arm drops, left arm reaches over. Ah, oh, this is much nicer, yes? Yes? Inhale, the arms up and overhead. Exhale, pull those elbows back. You do not have to gaze up. If you want to look forward, look forward. Inhale, arms up and overhead. And this time we're just going to go ahead and hinge at the hips and find ourselves in a forward folding bend. You can go ahead and bend the right knee and the left. You can shake the head out. Grab opposite elbows, paint the mat, whatever your jam is here, whatever you like to do. And if you don't know what you like to do, you can try all those things until you find something you like. All right. And then I want you to look slightly forward. Walk your feet a little bit wider than hips. Bring your right hand either to your left foot or to the other side of your left foot or even just the inside of the right foot. And we're going to sweep that left arm up. Good. If you want a slight bend in the knees to accommodate the twist, go for it. Big breath in. Exhale, drop. You can sway it out again. You can retie your shirt. Whatever you need. It's up to you. Still have a little bit of COVID long, but I'm breathing pretty decently. Hopefully I'm not murdering you guys. All right. Left hand comes either to the outside of the right foot, on the right foot, or the inside of the right foot. We're going to sweep that right arm up towards the sky. Option to bend the knees to accommodate more of a twist through the spine if you like. It is up to you. Good. Go ahead and bring both hands down. Let the head drop. Shake it out. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, looking forward. You can bring your hands to your shins or keep them on the mat. And then put that bend in the knees as you exhale, step back to plank. We're not hanging out here long. We're going to come to plank on knees. 
I will request that everybody come to plank on knees. So we're just going to have really good, strong form when we come down to our belly. So you'll see that I'm on my knees. My hands are about shoulders width apart, and I'm going to keep my elbows brushing against, you don't have to do all those, brushing against my ribs as I come down. So that's what it looks like from the front. And your plank is going to look like straight from knees to shoulders, not plank, not plank, right? We're not building with those planks. Okay, <laughs> looking forward, enough of that nonsense. Start to bend those elbows, keep the shoulders back away from the ears, take your time. And you might find a point where you're like, nope, I gotta come all the way down, come all the way down. Just trying to do it with as much control as possible and know that these things come with practice. So from our stomachs, we're going to come up onto our forearms into Sphinx pose. Nice and simple. Our hands are, our forearms are about shoulders width apart. So a really great test is if you grab opposite elbows and if you're able to grab them, that's your shoulders width distance. It'll also tell you if you want to split them a little bit wider, you know. But shoulders down the back. Think about moving the heart forward and getting that big stretch through the front body. It's just a little bit of a back bend here. And nothing too aggressive. Good. And then, <laughs> let's get more aggressive. And then we're going to cross our right forearm in front of us. We're going to bend our left knee. We're going to reach back with that left hand for the toes, the ankle, wherever we're grabbing. So a few things. Your left hip might roll up a little bit. Totally cool. But try to guide the left heel towards the left glute and try to keep the left shoulder open. I'm more okay with that hip coming up than the form falling apart just for the sake of keeping those hips down. Always and forever. All right. We're going to let go of the left foot, let it slowly come down to the mat. Not big up. Boom. Good. Coming back to our Sphinx pose, we're going to cross that left forearm and it will turn in front of us. So it's like a kickstand. We're going to bend that right knee, reach back, grab those right toes, roll that shoulder open. Again, another place where you might notice a big difference between what the left and the right side does um, for various reasons, dominant sides, injuries. Try not to approach it with any judgment. It's, you're just objectively getting feedback on where you are and hopefully doing something that feels good and nurturing for yourself. Good. All right, we're going to release that right foot. It's very slowly going to come down to the mat. We're going to come back to center. And then we're very carefully going to start to guide our hips back very slowly because you might feel it in your lower back. And we're going to find that child's pose again. So reminder, if you don't like that weight on your knees in child's pose, all you got to do is just roll over onto your back. Hopefully you don't have a battery pack for your microphone there and hug your knees to your chest. I don't recommend that, just saying. All right. Okay, so let's just go ahead and let the lower back lengthen. Take a few breaths, quiet everything down. Perfect. And then we're going to start to walk the hands back towards the body. And you're going to drop your hips to either side. And you're going to let your legs come before you. I'm really fighting with my shirt. Okay. So legs are nice and long and straight. You're going to bring them together. And I want you to flex your feet and press your knees into the mat. And sit really nice and tall here. Now. If sitting tall does not come with straight legs, slight bend in the knees. I'd rather see a tall spine and a bent leg than vice versa. From here, biceps by the ears or ears-ish in line with them. Big breath in. Exhale out and over. Don't let those hands come down. Just use those strong abdominals to come as far as you're coming over. And then once you find that you're not going anymore on your own locomotion, bring the hands down to the toes, the ankles, the shins. Don't be dead set on grabbing the toes. It's not, enlightenment is not in touching your toes. 
<laughs> so don't think that just because somebody can do a really deep fold or crazy yoga pose that enlightenment comes with that. Um, correlation is not causation. There are very enlightened people who can't touch their toes. <laughs> I can, not very enlightened, see? Proof. Take a big breath in. Exhale, just ragdoll. Just let the head drop. I'm going to start to walk the hands back towards the body. I like to lean back into my shoulders and give the legs a shake. Good, good. Bend the right knee. So the right foot comes to the inside of the left leg. I'm turning so you can see. You do not have to spin on your mat. I'm going to line up my sternum, the center of my chest, with that left leg. And I'm gazing towards my left toes. Arms up and overhead. Biceps by the ears. Big breath. Exhale out and over, 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 over. And then hands will go wherever they rest naturally. And so what I mean by resting naturally is if you have to roll your shoulders in front of your chest to grab something that's gone too far. You want to be able to be nice and tall and long with relaxed shoulders. And so that might be up here. You're still going to feel that stretch. You're still getting the benefits. It just doesn't look like somebody else's. Good. Start to walk the hands back towards the body. Lean into the hands. Go ahead and straighten the right leg. Give it a shake. Left foot. Bend the left knee. Bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right leg. Sternum. Lines up. Arms up and overhead. Good. Out and over, 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 over until you're not going over anymore. Hands come down. Okay, keep guiding your forehead towards your right toes. The nose is going down towards the right knee. And there's a very subtle twist of the left rib cage towards the right side of the body. Good. And then start to walk the hands back towards the body coming up. You can lean into the hands, give the legs a shake. Let's give the shoulders a little love here. Let's go ahead and roll that left shoulder back three to five times. I'm going to do three. And then we're going to roll it forward nice and slow three to five times. Good. And let's get the other side. Right side, roll that shoulder back. Really take your time. Make that motion as full and round as you got today. Reverse it, roll it forward. And don't stress if any of this feels weird and just not natural to you. It comes with time. Like the first time you do anything, very rarely are we going to do it perfectly. So if you're kind of like, eh, I'm not sure, it's cool. We've all been not sure, no matter where we are in our practice. Soles of the feet together, holding onto the ankles or the toes, getting nice and tall here. And then just start to pull yourself out and over your toes. So we're very straight in the back. Shoulders are down the back. You might not be going as far down as you want, but we're going to get really long. And then I'll give you an opportunity to get closer to your toes in just a second. If you really miss them, if you really want to get close to them. Good. So start to pull the belly button in towards the spine. You're going to start to curve the back. And you're going to start to bring your forehead towards that space between your feet. Now, if you like, you can use your elbows to gently guide the legs down towards the mat, but please be very kind to yourself as you do that. Stop battling yourself and start nurturing yourself. Good. Start to roll up one vertebrae at a time. The head's going to come up last. We're going to get really tall here. Bring the chin towards the chest, shoulders down the back, and then go ahead and lift the chin. Good. And then I'm going to move the battery pack this time. And I'm scooching onto the mat a little bit more because I need a landing spot for my head. And I prefer it on the mat than the tile. If you prefer tile for your head, you can stay where you are. And you're going to go ahead and bring the hands underneath the knees and roll down nice and slow, one vertebrae at a time. We're going to keep the knees bent with the soles of the feet on the mat. And go ahead and bring your feet mats width apart, outer edge of the feet outer edges of the mat. And we're going to drop both of our knees over to the right hand side, 
Just let them flop over there. And then you can bring your arms into a cactus shape. You can bring them into a T shape. If you feel better with a hand on the heart and the belly or both hands on the belly, just choose where you want to be. The T and the cactus will get a big pec major stretch. If you want to get into your pec minor, which gets shortened up when we're hunching over a keyboard, just go ahead and bring your hands down your sides, palms turned up. One last thing if you want a little bit more, right heel comes on top of the left knee. If your breath becomes ragged and your eyes pop open, take the foot off the knee. You've gone too far. Body doesn't like it. All right, let's go ahead. If our head is turned, bring the gaze back up to center. Then we're going to start to bring both knees back up to center. If you need to reline, readjust, take that second to do so. And then knees are going to fall over to your left-hand side. So same, same, opposite side. Arm variation of choice. Option to hook that left knee on top of the right. All right. Start to bring the gaze back up to center if the head has turned. Bring the knees back up to center. Slowly draw them in towards your chest. Give yourself a little bit of love. You can even bring your forehead towards your knees if you like that. Gunner. <laughs> go ahead and come into happy baby if you want it. We're going to go ahead and stack the ankles above the knee. And I'll show you from this angle. Our arms are going to come to the insides of our knees and come over the tops of the feet, the hands will, and then reach the outsides of the feet. So it's not like this thing or that. You're, you're coming up and over. And you're going to drag those knees down. Now your feet might look more like this. That is fine. If you have it in you, if it feels right, bringing the feet wider so the ankles come above the knees. But if you're here, don't stress it. You'll, you'll get there. You'll still get a stretch. It still hopefully feels really good. If it doesn't feel good, please don't do it. Good, and then you can release the feet. And you can go ahead and start to come all the way down into Shavasana. You can let your arms come to your sides, legs long, eyes closed. I'm going to sit up. So if you don't have any more time, just lie here for a second and then scooch. If you do have time for Shavasana, stay with me. And so as you lie back, and as your breathing slows down, start to notice that space between the eyes relaxing. Jaw is relaxing. And each exhale allows you to get a little bit heavier on the mat, allowing the shoulders to fall back. heart beating softly, the belly feeling calm, lower back relaxes, and then feel all those strong muscles in your hips and your glutes and your thighs, your calves, all just start to melt into the mat beneath you. Allowing you to drop into your final and deepest relaxation.
are welcome to stay here. If you would like to start to come out of Shavasana, start to come back into your breath. Start to come back into your body by wiggling your fingers and your toes. And then if and when it feels good, you can reach your arms up and overhead. Get that first thing in the morning stretch. And then roll onto your side, whatever side you prefer. Bend your knees, rest your head on your arm like a pillow, and just enjoy a quiet moment before we move on. Start to slowly push yourself up to a comfortable seated position, sitting tall, eyes closed. Hands can be on the knees in the lap or at the heart center in prayer. Taking one final breath of gratitude here. Seeing in your mind's eye whatever it is you're most grateful for in this moment. It could be an experience, it could be a person, it could be a place, it could be a food. No judgment, whatever you're most grateful for. And as you see that, start to inhale through the nose. Inhale, 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 inhale. Sip in a little bit more air. Hold the breath at the top. Lower the chin to chest. Acknowledging the heart's wisdom and sealing in this breath of gratitude. Lift the chin, exhale, let it go. Start to lift the sides of the mouth into a smile. Start to blink the eyes open to come back to the now. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I will be saving this on my YouTube channel. And um, let's do this again next week. Maybe a 30-minute class. We can do more if you guys want. But um, thank you. I just appreciate your time. And I hope that this got a little energy out and helps you feel a little bit looser and ready to do whatever it is you need to do tonight. Go forth and be awesome. Namaste. Nah. All right, I'm scooching my butt here. Okay, so until next time, <laughs> bye.